Mecha anime has always been a classic anime genre. After all, who doesn't enjoy seeing giant mechs beating the ever-living shit out of each other? Sadly, though some franchises like Gundam still exist and are going on to this day, it feels like there hasn't been a universally praised mecha anime that has released in a really long time. Until 86 that is. It would probably be an exaggeration to call it a revolution of the mecha genre, and I doubt the mecha will ever be able to become a leading genre in anime, or ever become as big as Big Titty Isekai, thankfully. But nonetheless, 86 is an amazing show in its own right, and I kinda just wanted to gush over one of the best anime I've seen this year before the second core, the second season releases. Oh for fuck's sake, we have enough trouble differentiating guy and girl in anime, now we can't even differentiate between core and season?! 86, against every light novel title ever, having the shortest title name in light novel existence, is actually about a group of people referred to as the 86. Props to it actually having a short, concise title that makes sense. The world brings a dystopian setting, with humanity fighting against a group of mechs called the Legion. The people of this world, very kindly, get a bunch of slaves to send on a suicide mission to defend their city and fight the Legion, just like any medieval noble would. My name is Lawrence Hellman Gloucester. In this world, this group of essentially slaves are known as the 86, and are pretty much everyone that doesn't have white hair. So, they're racist. But with hair color, instead of skin color. Wait, but racist means skin color, so, uh, is there a word for discrimination against hair color? Wait, what if they dye their hair? Jokes aside, the racism is portrayed in quite a painful, yet I think realistic way. These kids are pretty much being forced to fight enemy mechs for a country that sees them as less than insects. But the scarier thing to see was how they just got used to it. They understand that they can't do anything but fight and just have to accept their eventual death on the battlefield. And yet, even when they've told themselves that they're ready, that they've accepted their fate, it is only when the time has come that they scream in fear, realizing that accepting it was never possible. While real life has no spider mechs shooting explosives, no, probably, even as someone who knows jack shit about history, I have no doubt that something like this has happened in the past. I'm sure there are people in some war who just charged their death for someone who saw them as nothing but pawns on a chessboard. But seeing how these kids have to accept their death was the real painful part of the anime. How do you simply accept that you're going to die meaninglessly in some war you are forced into? How do you live day by day not knowing if it'll be your last? But furthermore, if you're an elite soldier, how do you accept the deaths of hundreds of comrades, past friends, and just live on like it's nothing? The strongest part of the show, in my opinion, is definitely this form of depth given to the characters. And yes, the anime does go Attack on Titan concentration camp genocide mode at first, but after some bang 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 and death, you do start to see who are the main characters who will live on and grow at least for a while. As people who are very clearly discriminated against, we get to see their viewpoints on life and how they have to deal with it. It extends beyond, racism is bad, stop racism! showing the entire state of the country and how fucked the entire situation really is. But beyond racist war suffering, we get to see the other side of the coin. Enter Lena, a military leader who is against all this racist treatment and wants to end all this nonsense. Yet in the eyes of the privileged who see discrimination as the norm, she is seen but nothing as a joke. After being appointed to guide a squad of 86, she guides the squad through battle after battle, yet as a mecha anime, this is obviously never the point of the show. It really never was giant mechs punching, uh, shooting the shit out of each other. And that's made very clear. It's about the interactions, views, and growth of two sides, the discriminated and the privileged. Though they both know and think the situation is absolutely fucked, it doesn't make it exactly easy to understand one another and what both sides have gone through. So what am I trying to say with all this fancy word work? No racism, racism bad. And then everyone clapped. But yeah, of course it's not as simple as that. Lena, though has strong beliefs against the fucked up state, is pretty much powerless. She's constantly clowned on as a weirdo that cares about these subhuman creatures. I mean, for fuck's sake, even her best friend gives her shit for trying to be anti-racist. 
That's how deeply rooted in it is, and the only thing she can do is attempt to get as much support for her team as possible and understand them better. I think that's why Lena was never an annoying character to me. Yes, she does seem a bit naive at times, and yes, she is as powerless as this bitch over here at times, but that's the point. She is powerless. Okay, before you comment powerless is the point of powerless, let me explain. In every fucked situation she sees herself in, it genuinely feels like she's trying her absolute best to fight against the situation. You see her begging the commander for support. You see her guiding her team the best she can. You see her talk to them as if they were humans, friends, not weapons. So it's hard to hate her just because she's weak. Yet, when a piloted mech gets blown up, when a comrade gets stabbed alive, what is she supposed to do but watch as the dot on the screen disappear while she hears the dying screams of someone she cared about? She's the one sitting at a safe spot. She's the one a hundred kilometers away from the battlefield. What is she supposed to do? What can she do? She's powerless, and the anime mercilessly shows it. The anime shows a girl who's literally doing everything she can possibly do, yet to no avail. That's why unlike some anime where the MC's a useless whiny bitch, it's hard to blame Lena at all, and perhaps to some extent, she could feel relatable. Obviously not watching kids scream for mom as they get their face ripped off by mech level, but perhaps some of us have experience seeing a friend go through a very dark time in his or her life. It can be suffocating seeing someone you want to help deeply, yet being unable to. And that feeling of powerlessness can be so hopeless, exactly how Lena feels at times. I won't spoil what happens, but she definitely grows and what she's done has made me have mad respect for her. But enough about being powerless, I already know too much about it. <laughs> Another part of the anime, which I'd almost consider the semi-main part, yet great nonetheless, is just the conversations between Lena and the squad. Unlike their previous handlers, who couldn't give any less of a shit about them and was pretty much a laughingstock to the squad, Lena deeply cares for them as humans. She communicates with them as equals, as friends, talking about random daily life shit. And while the 86 squad don't exactly appreciate a privileged fuck sitting in her safe room talking to essentially war slaves, they slowly warm up to her and realize that she's a genuine person trying to change the fucked up government. Stories are told, character motivation, that I won't spoil, and a much deeper understanding of the world is given. But more importantly, a bond is born. Even though the entire thing is no more than a daily online conversation with a stranger, the conversations grow genuine. While unable to help that much physically, the very least Lena could do was hear out their stories, understand their pain, and help them through and through mentally. And I say this knowing full well that the whole 86 squad is pretty mentally strong with all the shit that they've been through. But it feels like mutual care is present. The 86 squad start to appreciate that their handler isn't just some cunt here to laugh at their deaths, but a person who cares for them from the heart despite never meeting them. And Lena gains a much deeper understanding of how the other side, being sent to their deaths, feel like, and how they cope with it. It might as well be a Discord call in a random server, but their bond feels so real. Now with all the deep shit out of the way, it's time for me to praise the more, I guess, surface level stuff. Spider mech battles that make X-Arm CGI look like a kindergarten drawing combined with a Saono soundtrack? You know, the guy that composed this? I rest my case. Oh, also, both personality and looks, Lena is a top tier waifu. Oh, of course there's cultured merch of her. I see you know what you're doing, Kanokawa. But in all honesty, 86 is a show that explores racism, deep character motivations, and a beautifully terrifying world for the unfortunate. It does everything I wanted a show like this to do and far exceeded my initial expectations in the action, feels, characters, pretty much every fucking department in the building. Season 2, <clears throat> CORE 2, starts in a couple of days and I don't know how the story will continue on from here, but I'm hyped. This is an amazing show and if you haven't seen it, then uh, why are you here? But yeah. All I have left to say is, I love 86. Even more than 69. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want more anime and memory stuff, then be sure to subscribe. 
With that, I'm gonna go jam to some Sawano.